Hello everybody, welcome to the Credit Risk class at Nova SBE and welcome to my home as well, to this uh, small corner of, of my home. As I said in class, the point of these videos is to highlight the most important part of the handouts that are already posted in Moodle. So I will uh, stress or uh, point you to the to the topics that I recommend you spend more time reading. If you have any questions about that material, you should ask them during the live sessions that we will have in uh, throughout the course. All right, let's start. I'm going to open the, the handouts. Uh, again, these are posted in Moodle and you can read uh, after the video. W what we are going to do in this video is to cover this, this part here, the, the first chapter. I will split this into, vi into two videos such that uh, they are not too long. The, the first video, this one, will cover this part here and then the second one will cover section 1.5. All right. So the, the the first chapter is about basic concepts, def, the basic definitions of credit risk. And let's start from the very beginning. What is credit risk? And uh, the credit risk is the, the possibility that the counterparty defaults on a, on a payment. And we are typically thinking about securities like like bonds or bank loans. The loss that we will have, that credit loss, is this that we will, um, this variable we, we, we call D here. And uh, it is useful to decompose that loss into these three terms you see here, right? So the first one is uh, uh, this N, you can think of this as a, as a switch. It's either one or it's zero. It is one if the bond issuer has defaulted and therefore we suffer a credit loss, this becomes one, and it is zero if the issuer has not defaulted yet. So if he, is, he has not defaulted yet, there is not, no loss, meaning uh, this whole term disappears, the loss is zero. The second term is this E here, which is called exposure. Uh, this is basically, uh, this is also called the, the the um, um, exposure at default, meaning uh, the value that we will lose if there is uh, a default. Uh, think of this, uh, we'll go through the det more details in a second, but uh, think of this basically as the amount that you have uh, lended to someone, for example. Uh, if, uh, if you lend 100 and, and that, that uh, person does not pay you back, your exposure is that 100. That's the amount you lose. But it is the, the amount you lose if you are not able to recover any part of the 100. So the third variable that you, you see here, the L stands for loss given default. What this means is the following. Usually, um, if you lend 100 to someone and then that person does not pay you back, what happens is that you go to court to try to recover some part of that money, of that 100. So usually you will, um, in court, you'll be able to recover part of the money, but not everything. So let's say you recover 40%. You recover, in this example, you recover 40 euros. Okay? What you actually lose is the remaining, so the 60. So that is the, the, the part that you see here. This loss given default is the fraction that you lose in case of default. So in that example, 60%. So if there is a, a, a default, this N becomes one, your exposure was 100, you only recover 40%, meaning you actually lose 60%, your total default loss would be, in that example, 60 euros. So what we are going to do is 
uh, in these handouts, we're going to look at all these variables in turn. So we're first actually going to start with this one, the exposure here. Then we're going to look at the loss given default, this L. And then uh, we will look at the probability of default. Because whether this indicator is 1 or 0, it's actually determined by the fact of, uh, by, by the, fact of uh, the firm being in default or not, which uh, depends on the probability that that firm defaults. Okay, so let's start with the exposure. Uh, so uh, here I'm not going to read through this. Um, uh, go through this on your own. Again, the basic idea here is that um, the simple concept of exposure uh, is very, very simple. Um, these, the, 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 the most obvious sources of exposures of exposure are uh, a loan or a bond, right? So if you if you if you invest in a bond, um, yeah, obviously you are exposed to to the amount of of the investment. Uh, the other sources here are less obvious. Um, in particular, don't worry about this part here. We're not going to talk about this. Exposure, the, the amount of exposure can be mitigated uh, by several techniques. The first two are the most used and therefore the most important that you should read. Netting agreements and collateral. Okay, so these are techniques to reduce the exposure, the risk. Even though you lend money to someone, if you lend with collateral, meaning you give money to the other person, but at the same time you ask for some guarantee, then uh, obviously your risk is less, your exposure is, is less. Okay, so this covers the variable E that you see here. All right, so now let's look at this variable L, the, the loss given default. the loss given default here. So as I said, uh, there are two, two sides of the same coin. We, we can either refer to the loss given default or to the recovery rate, and they are related like this. One, one of them is equal to one minus the other. So recovery is one minus uh, the loss. Uh, typical numbers that you should keep uh, in the back of your head are these reference values of 40% for the recovery rate and 60% for the loss given default, which are kind of average levels uh, that um, reflect what we see in the market more or less, okay, accurately. Um, there are a couple of factors that influence the recovery rate or the loss given default. And this, the first one here is important. So you should re read through this. This is um, something you should be um, aware of. There are other factors that become a little bit more, um, uh, a little less clear on which direction they go. So there are things that we um, need to take into consideration in, um, in practical specific cases. But it's less. Uh, it's it's uh, it's harder to make broad statements about the, the the direction of these other factors. So one, the first the first. Uh, so I told you in, in the first in the first set in the first class that credit risk is much uh, much uh, less neat than than fixed income, and here starts the first the first issue. Uh, we, we need to, to um, know or at least to estimate the recovery rate for a bond when we're going to, to price a bond, for example. Unfortunately, it is very hard to get good estimates. One uh, evidence of that is this table that you see here. This, is, this comes from a, a, um, a paper, an empirical study, where they try to, to estimate um, recovery rates for different type of bonds. So you can see here that the mean recovery rate evolves in the direction that we expect. Again, read that paragraph over there in the beginning about collateral and seniority and you will understand why 
this number is decreasing from 56 to 35. On average, is 42, which is kind of that reference value I just told you of 40%. But then what is also um, interesting in this table is these standard deviations here. Right? So uh, if you think about the, let's think of the average number here. What this is saying is that on average, the recovery rate is 42%, but with a standard deviation of 25%. I mean, so, so if you think about this, I mean, you, you are saying the number is 42, but you don't know if it is actually, I mean, it's very easy to be one standard deviation to the right or one standard deviation to the left. So basically, it can easily be 60, it can easily be 20. Basically, we have a very poor idea of what is the recovery rate on average, right? So what, uh, tip, uh, what people do? is uh, when we, when we um, need to say what is the recovery rate, since we don't have a good idea of what is a precise point estimate, what we actually do, in some models at least, is we use a distribution rather than using just one single point. Right? So, uh, now, we, 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 if we want to have a distribution for something, the, the, the first the first distribution that always comes to mind is what what, what we typically think of is a, a normal distribution right uh, a normal distribution here is not a good solution because um, so this is where this is the point where I, I would ask you questions in class and it's weird to be asking and answering immediately but the, 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 that's, that's what it is right so a normal distribution here does not work because a normal distribution has, uh, a support that goes from minus infinity to plus infinity. So a normal distribution can have any number from minus 10,000 to plus 3 million, whatever, any number. Um, a, a recovery rate is ob obviously bounded between 0 and 1. Okay, So the normal distribution would not be appropriate to generate numbers for a recovery rate. So instead of a normal distribution, what we need to use is something that generates random numbers between 0 and 1. A beta distribution does that. It's kind of a complicated function. Uh, so it looks like this, but this is actually uh, hide, hiding hand, under the under the the matrix. Uh, how do you say? Uh, under the um, under the rub, um, the all all the nasty stuff. So this is not something that we can compute by hand on the board because uh, one of these parameters, the C here, is actually a complicated, complicated function. So to generate these uh, random numbers for the recovery rate, we need to use uh, a computer that generates these numbers. Right? So I can do that um, doing these transformations that you see here. And for example, if I want to generate the density of these distributions that we see, that you see here, uh, I can match the parameters of the beta distribution to the mean and standard deviation that I want. So, for example, suppose I want the senior secured, this one here, senior secured, which is the the this line here. What I do is I use a, a computer to generate numbers from the beta distribution through um, uh, inputting parameters a and b like this like you see here where a and b are functions of the mean and the standard deviation of that distribution that I wanted sorry again it was the senior secured so a and b will be functions of this 56 and 24 that you see here All right so plug 56 as you see where you see a mu here plug 24 where you see a sigma in here a and B will be inputs to the to the beta function, and you can get this distribution, right? So uh, the, the beta distribution does what we were uh, expecting, namely generate a recovery rate between zero and one, and giving me a distribution with a given mean and variance that matches the data. So actually, the first project. Um, that I will post will ask you to do 
a similar figure to the, uh, a similar figure to one of these other other rates here, other classes here. Okay. All right. So that's the that's. Let me go back here. We covered the the loss given default. This part here, or the recovery rate. Uh, we had already talked about exposure, so now let's talk a little bit about this last term here, this indicator. Again, this was one if there was default, zero if there was no default yet. That is determined by the probability of default. Okay? We will spend uh, a lot of time estimating probabilities of default in, in following chapters. For now, we are just going to talk about the, the main concept. Okay? So uh, probability of default is what its what its name suggests. So I will use typically a given horizon, say one year. And if I say that the probability of default is 2%, it means that there is a chance of 2% of the, the obligor defaulting within the next year. Okay. Uh, it will be uh, very useful to extend time, um, say from one year to three years, using this type of tree. Okay. So what this is saying is that uh, today we are in a state of survival at time zero. Let me try to increase this a little bit, like this. Okay. So today we are in a state of survival, and uh, one year from now we can either be we can be in, in one of two states. Either we are in default with a probability of default p, and we put a, a one here to say that this is the probability over the first year, or we can be alive in, in survival at the end of the first year with the remaining probability, so 1 minus p, this same p. And then one year after, the same branching repeats. So uh, at the second year, we can, at the end of the second year, we can either be in default with some probability that may be different from the first probability, or we can be alive in a state of survival with 1 minus this probability, and so on. We keep, we keep branching like this. So again, uh, we'll, this setup will be very useful. We will come back to this many times. Um, one, more, one more concept. We had the probability of default. We can also have the probability of survival, right? which is the probability of surviving between a given date and the final date. So for example, the probability of surviving over the full period, the full three years, so of surviving from here until the end, is what is notice that there are many ways to get into default. So I get I can get to default at the end of the first year, and then I would stay in default. I assume that default is an absorbing state, or I could default like this at the end of the second year and stay in default, or I could default like this and get to default. So there are many ways to get to default at the end of the third year. There are all these uh, alternatives here. But there is just one path that leads to survival over the three years, which is this path here. Right? So the probability of surviving from 0 to 3 is the probability of this branch. And that's what we have here. The probability of surviving until the end is the probability of that top branch, right? the probability of this branch here. And that, uh, that simplifies the, the calculations a little bit because uh, now I know that the probability of defaulting over the three years, now notice that this is not the one year probability, this is the, the, the cumulative probability over the, the, the full three years. It's the what? It's the probability of um, everything except that top branch that keeps me alive. Right? So the probability of defaulting is 1 minus the only branch that keeps me alive over the three years. All right. So look at this example, make sure you get this number here, uh, then let me know if you have any questions at, uh, in class. Okay, I'll stop the video here so that this does not get very long and continue in a second video.